Hey everybody, it's your girl Nicole Holland here back again for another segment of Be More Intellectual and Sexual video series. This subject that I'm speaking on is so taboo, but I'm going to speak on what God gave me anyway. It's called celibacy. Do you know your worth? Celibacy. Do you know your worth? I'm going to read a scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 18 through 20. It says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What? No, ye are not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 18 through 20. One of the hardest things for any Christian to do is stay celibate. Our bodies is not our own. We as women and men will make excuses. Oh, God knows my heart. He knows I'm trying. He'll forgive me. When in fact, deep down, you know better. You're just going for lustly to fulfill a lustful desire. Corinthians 13 teaches us about love. It speaks about love. People think they're in love today and they're in lust. Lust is a four letter word, just like love. And when you remain celibate, you don't need to have a bunch of men call all over you. A lot of you do that. A lot of you have done that. But guess what? It's okay. You know why? Because God has to, he will forgive you, ask for forgiveness, and then forgive yourself. You don't have to lay down and sleep with a man just to be complete or feel whole with a man. Most men today are just dogmatic in their mentality. It's selfish means, selfish gain, self-fulfillment. And if I could use whoever I want to, that's who I'm going to go with. They don't ever want to deal with nobody that's a challenge. There's many a day that I felt like, wow. Men just say, okay, whatever, Nicole, she's tripping. I ain't got time for that. You know, they want to go. It's so easy to go from the distant to the familiar. Men going to go with that's familiar to them. I would be called the distance because I'm saying no. When I'm, you know, making a man accountable, you're going to respect and treat me right. I'm not going to lay down and sleep with you. As a woman, your most prized possession is between your two legs, and you have to carry it that way. A man only do to us what we allow. And we as women can say no, and no is a word. I'm not bashing no man. I'm just stating facts. You can't judge when you got facts. So, in order to remain celibate, don't put yourself in a situation or circumstance uh, or belittle yourself just to say you have that man or that relationship or he threatens to leave you or, well, I'm not going to see you anymore if we can't have sex. When then let him go. What, you lose a little time? Might shed a few tears. Might lose a little sleep. It's okay. It's okay to like someone that you're attracted to, but it's okay to say no to. And if they can't respect you and hearing that no, no is the word. Well, bye-bye, boo-boo, because I'm not dealing. I'm not sleeping with you just to satisfy your selfish means. I'm beautifully, wonderfully made. I am whole. What my pillow say, I'm grateful, thankful, and blessed. Okay? I don't need to have you or any other man make me feel like if I don't sleep with him, I'm not complete. If I don't sleep with a man, then I'm not a woman. A single woman out here. That's what a lot of people's mentality. Well, girl, you can play the field. You can get yours. Sow your oats. That's what a man's told. Go out here and get yours. But you know what comes behind all those broken hearts with sex? Sex is powerful. Sex you cannot take lightly. Because guess what? It's not going to take you lightly. It's no joke. Oh, Miss Nicole, you always talk about this sex stuff. We get on my nerves. Everything always go back to sex. Well, do you know the sex-infused society we live in today? Do you realize that? 
all the unwanted pregnancies out here, and I know I've said this before, and a lot of things I will repeat again, but so many of y'all talking about you have needs. What you have a need to get hurt, a need to have an unwanted pregnancy, a need to have an unwanted disease, a need to play yourself. Really? For what? A few minutes of pleasure? And a lot of times you left empty because you get a man that's all about himself and his self-gratification. He don't care about you and your feelings. Oh, that ain't so. That's not true, Miss Nicole. That's not true. Why are you always on that? Well, check this out. The channels Be More Intellectual and Sexual, the video series. You want to be intellectually sound with anybody. And then sexually, you wouldn't should know that to the marriage. Then they say, woo. They say, Nicole, it's worth it. My girlfriends who've been married, who are single, I'm one of a few left of my single friends. Most of all of them are married now. There's a few that are divorced, but they're seeing someone and they're possibly remarried. But that's fine. But they all say, Nicole, wait. Just wait. We admire you. We admire your strength, girl. Wait. I wish I would have, or I wouldn't have been in that situation, or I wouldn't have been divorced, or I wouldn't have been going through because I was rushing things and I didn't wait on God. And, and I admire what you're doing. And I say, I thank God. It ain't been easy. It's not been easy. But celibacy, you got to know your worth. I just made up my mind years ago. After going from one guy to this guy to that guy to this guy. I was not going to put myself in a situation to keep getting played. And your feelings get hurt so bad. And men can be rude. They can be cruel. They can be cold. You can have a great time. Like I said, listen to my video that I say dating to play or dating on purpose. Because when you're dating to play, that's what people do is casual sex today. You don't want to be caught up in casual sex because it leaves you empty. It's a void. You think you got this person in your life that's going to be there for you. When you're not in the covenant, there's no guarantees. People are like, well, you can still be in the covenant, Mr. Co, and it won't be a guarantee. Yeah, that's true. But nine times out of ten, it's going to be what you in now, a mess. It does work out. Too many examples out here to see. People want to rush God. They want to rush what he can do. They want to rush, well, I know God, and I know he knows my heart, and he knows how I feel. Okay. But the question you have to ask, your most prized possession is between your two legs. You have to ask yourself, I'm better than that. Do you want any any men just keep pawing all over your body? Coming down on to you? You can't get no deeper than that. A man, however, because when you really into somebody and they're into you, that is the best feeling in the world to just be with that person. But then I think, well, Nicole, you might like him. We always tend as women. There's some men that like a man. I mean, let's try that again. We as women tend to like or love a man more. But the old saints and my grandmother and my mother and aunts used to always say, you want a man to love and like you more. In other words, you want a man to love and like you more, he's not going to go nowhere. And that's true. When a man got his heart, when you got a man's heart, you got everything. Like I said, when you don't have a man's heart, you don't have his finances, you don't have him. <laughs> his bedfellow going to flop everywhere he wanted to go because you were just something to do. Mm -mm. Celibacy, I know my worth. I'm better than that. I'm not going to be your boy toy, your play thing. thing. God made the world our playground not to be played with. You're not going to play with me. I'm not going to have you do that to me. I'm not going to sit up here and have you put me through all kind of hardships and heartaches for your selfish needs. I bet I don't. I bet I don't. There's so much temptation around us today that people are very aggressive when it comes to sex, be it male or female. I'm really coming down on my sisters because guess what? A man can't play if you don't allow him to. A man can't come in your house if you don't allow him to. A man can't come at you with temptation if you don't allow it. 
celibacy, know your worth. Put your foot down and say, no, I'm more than just my body. I'm intellectually first. And then sexually, if we were to get married, that's a, it's a beautiful thing. Because like Hebrews 13, 4 says, marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. Whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. So God says the bed, marriage bed is, is undefiled, meaning it's not dirty. Anything, everything goes. If you're comfortable with it, he's comfortable with it, yay. But in a singleness and being out here and just doing whatever with whomever because you think that's the thing to do. No, it's not. Are you? Why are you some of you women afraid to say no? Why are you women are afraid to think that if they did work with this guy, it's going to work with the next one or the next one or the next one? And you still come up with the same result. Well, Miss Nicole, you don't understand. I love him. Okay. Well, he said he, said he loved me. I said he, most times men love what you do for them and to them, but they ain't in love with you. Because a man in love with you is not going to play you. He's going to do anything and everything to build you up and make you feel secure. You won't have to doubt, wonder, worry. When that rubber meet the road, you got that man's heart. He gonna be there. And until you have that, you don't have him. You just have his time. Like I say, in recreational ships or relationships. Recreational ships is what a man in his mind has. Because recreational ships. Oh, she's something to do. What do you do at a recreational, at a rec, rec, rec center when you go? Play games. Everybody gets a what? Turn. Get the picture. You are turn. You're his turn. You're his turn to do what he wants to do, and he'll go to the next and say next. Recreation, and you're thinking of relationship. Us as women, when we think of relationships, we think celibacy. We think sex. We're involved. We're together. We're emotional. We are it. Once we sleep with a man. Or give my child. Oh, he's he's it. Oh, he's in our life. Don't let him step out here and get no little hussy. And that's what we would say. And I'm like, I know he ain't going out. And, I know he ain't playing me. No, he's not playing you. You played yourself. Oh, Miss Nicole, that's so harsh. No, that's the real accountability, boo boo. That's the truth. We play ourselves as women. I ain't got myself played many a day. And I look back on it. And it was it was a counseling, a bad relationship that brought me to counsel and counseling Christ, excuse me. And in that counseling session, he said to me, Nicole, the one thirty morning booty calls can't happen if you didn't allow it. Him coming over there playing and using you, and you lost your virginity to him. Is that his fault or your fault? He ain't put no gun to your head, make you lay down in that bed. I was mad. Like, who do you think he is? Oh, I got pissed off. He's like, Psh. Some said, Red, be pissed off and pissed on. And you've been pissed on enough, huh? I was like, mm, guess you're right. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that man in the mirror and have to take a look at yourself and make a change. I love that song by the late great, the greatest entertainer ever, Michael Jackson. Man in the mirror, because that's the truth. Change starts with the man in the mirror. And ladies, we make that change. We don't have to sit and settle for nothing just to please a man and his little loin, his little bedfellow. Because that bedfellow, he has me flopping all over the place. But then don't you do it. Oh boy, they flip out. And then you wonder why you're so emotional. You're always secure. Well, do we have a relationship? Are we together? And you always got all these doubts and all these questions and doing all this wandering. Because somewhere along the way, you lost your worth. You lost yourself just to have this man. You don't want to do that, ladies. <clears throat> You're beautifully, wonderfully made. Your body is the temple of the Lord. 
And he doesn't go dwell in an unclean temple. You may have desires, and I get that. I do too. Who don't love having sex? It's a beautiful thing when you're really with somebody that you care for. But you know what's even deeper? I have not experienced that yet, but I've been told, Cole, girl, wait. Ain't nothing like it when a man is in love with you and he is into you. And you're less like, oh my gosh, I don't doubt, wonder, worry. Every whim I have, every thought, every feeling, every place. He just knows where to kiss, where to hug, where to touch, where to caress. I was like, oh, girls, tell me, do tell me more, tell me more. Because <laughs> I don't know what that's like. It's been so long, and I've never had that in your face to know what a man cares. I was just too busy playing with my heart. It disappointed me. <sighs> Building on a relationship on sex is going to crash and burn, period. It leaves you feeling empty, a void you try to fill, or suppress. And one thing that sex, not a covenant of marriage, what it does, and you don't know your word, it has big wounds. And then more and more you do is add salt to a wound. And when you add salt to a wound, salt will burn and it festers. And it burns and it festers. That's where heartbreak comes in. When you have a heart that's broken from a man playing with your emotions, it's tough, ladies. You don't want that, honey. You want your wounds turned into scars. You can enjoy a man and his time without him ever touching you. He doesn't have to be in your business. He don't have to be in your home. It's too much in this big, beautiful world we're blessed to live into to have a good time with someone. And just always have in the back of your mind, you know, don't get so consumed with it. You just make up your mind and say, that's it. I'm not having sex until I get married. I'm not going to be in a covenant with someone that I wasn't destined to be with. And then you wonder why circumstance situations happen. You've got all these people out here. I'll tell anybody. And there's a young man that I listen to, Tony Gaskins. Love him. He's a great, he's a great uh, life coach. But he talks about a lot of dating advice. And what's he say? Ladies, you got to stay off your bike. You sound like he's saying bike, but he's saying back. And I like him. He's 37 years old, I believe. 37, 30, 37. But he's like 67 in the mind. Gifted brother. And he cares. And he's a Christian brother. And I love the way he loves his wife and his children. He's an example of what you should strive for, ladies. We need more of that out there. There's a lot of nice dudes. I've had a lot of great men in my life. Really like them. Care about a lot of them to this day. You know, and I wish them well. They just weren't the men for me. But every man that's in your life, he crosses your path for a reason. And it also will allow you to see what it is you're going to tolerate and what you're not. But everything always goes back to sex. I'd be like, just to even talk about it, you know, I'm just waiting for the comments to come. Oh, there she go with that sex again. Well, okay. I'm doing and walking in my purpose. I'm walking in my destiny. I've been walking this journey for 28 years, and I've been through a lot. I have seen a lot, so ain't nothing you can tell me. Check it out. If you don't like it, you don't have to look at my channel. There's a whole bunch of other channels out there to watch. But when you walk in, in your destiny and your purpose, that's okay. You don't have to watch. For every five or six that don't want to watch, God will bring 10 to 15 more that will. Okay? Because I'm going to keep teaching and living truth. And I'm not preaching. I'm not better, like I said. It's, this channel is about accountability to young women to make you look at yourself, take a look at yourself, and make a change. Change starts with the man in the mirror. Change starts in you. It's all about the mindset, the way you dress. Don't be so provocative in your dress, ladies. 
and then you wonder why men come at you in a disrespectful way that you find disrespectful when he's just thinking, oh, I thought that's what she wanted, that kind of attention. That's the way she's showing me. Keep your goodies on the shelf. Keep your girls, you know, don't show them. Don't wear stuff so tight. Don't be so provocative. Celibacy, know your worth. Don't sleep with a man that's not your husband. Don't sleep with a man that you didn't have a commitment with. Most of my commitment, like I said, the fivefold a dating on purpose is the friendship, the dating, the commitment, engagement to marriage. That's just what it is. And if you don't have that with a man, you can have a good time. You could be seeing four or five different men right now. As long as none of them touch you sexually, you good. Like you said, you lose a little time. Hey, I, you'll gain something from all of them. You'll learn something. So... You're the one that's in control of how you want to be treated, how men talk to you, how they address you, how you go about your just living your life. And I know it can be lonely some days. It can be lonely. But we as single women are the bride of Christ. So Jesus is our husband until he releases us is his young queens to his king, to our, to our king. Because he's the king of king, Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and the last, no man works like him. Jesus Christ, the first and the last, no man works like him. So when he says, okay, daughter, I got your husband for you. The reason why he got your husband, because he didn't told that man. Like I said before, a man ain't going to date and get to love and say, okay, we're going to get married. They already see and know she's the one I'm going to marry. And that's how they're going to come at you. They ain't going to play with you. They ain't going to talk about no dating. Look, I I like you. I want us to be in a committed relationship. I know we can take it slow. Whatever it takes, they're going to go whatever the way you roll. That's how they're going to go. However God flows, that's how you go. If you don't feel a vibe with it, you don't have to. There's no word written just because a man approaches you that you got to roll with him because you don't or vice versa. So I have one thing that I want to share. Um, my best friend gave me this years ago. She had this made in the Philippines and I loved it so much. And she said, Phyllis, we always talk about it. She called me Phyllis. Anybody in high school is Phyllis. June 6, 1987, <laughs> when I graduated, it became P. Nicole. But Phyllis Nicole is my first name. So, sidebar. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. She gave me this, and I loved it. It's on a plaque. and But I typed it out, and I want to share this with these young ladies on this video. It's called Sex. The author is unknown, but whoever wrote it is beautiful. It says sex. It's like a gift wrapped in brown paper. There's a beautiful gift inside. In this package is wrapped for protection, tied for security, stamped, fragile, handled with care. It's easy to loosen the strings to let just anywhere anyone tear it at the wrapping, away at the wrapping, to give the gift without commitment offer it to the highest bidder or hand it out as prize for a game. There's a gift wrapped inside this brown paper. It's for keeps, not to be exchanged, no deposit, non-refundable. It's a surprise, a happy treat to be opened by the person to whom it's addressed on the date marked forever. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know who wrote this, but when I saw this, I was in my early 20s. This started, this changed my life. It showed me that, wow, I know it had to be written by a man because men let women know, like I said before, a man who tells you about another man, listen to him. 
Because he care enough so you won't be hurt. Because it's hard out here. But sex is a beautiful, beautiful act that God made it's for marriage only. Not in a covenant with somebody that's not your husband. And you're not in a covenant, excuse me. Um, you're just shacking, living with them, casual, something to do. Because in a man's mind, you're recreation. In your mind, it's relationship. No, it's the bottom line comes down. Celibacy, you know your worth. Be about your worth. So your most prized possession, ladies, is between your two legs and carry it that way. You're beautifully, wonderfully made. Don't settle. When you settle for less, you get less than what you settle for. It's mind over matter. If you don't mind, well, guess what? It don't matter. So stay encouraged, young ladies. Say no. No is a word. Love yourself. Be about you. So until next time, you and God, a majority in the every day of the week, you walk with your head held high. You look the world right in the eye. You and God, y'all got this. So I appreciate you tuning in. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye.